Good evening and welcome. I'm Sheila Balgobin and I'm the Dream Detective and I help you to sleep better and to find the gold in the gobbledygook of your dreams so you can live the life you dream of. This evening I'd like to, to share with you a little bit of the um, happenings at the Awaken the Goddess Festival that I attended last Saturday. Um, I was running around so much that Sunday I was just too pooped and had to go, <laughs> had to rest all day. I was stayed in my pajamas practically all day. But the theme of of the festival obviously was Awaken the Goddess, but what was really interesting about it is that there truly was an unseen hand that was that was helping us along and I'll as I tell you the story you'll see what I mean. The venue that um, had been selected for the event is in South London or Southeast London in Rotherhive. And um, it was a venue that hadn't been tried before by the organizers. She had used a much larger space, but um, just thought administratively it was too much of a headache. So she decided to try a smaller event. So we went to this this small community center, actually, as we found out in Rotherhive. And we get there, we're supposed to get in nine o'clock so we can set up and start at 10. Nine o'clock goes, 9.30 comes, 10 o'clock, we're still standing out in the drizzle waiting for the caretaker to show up. So, you know, we're starting to get a bit restive and a bit nervous and not sure what to do next. And one um, of the workshop leaders said, ah, listen, instead of complaining about this, we're here, for, you know, in honor of the goddess, let's ask her to sort this out. So we joined hands and um, the workshop leader gave a, a beautiful invocation. And before we had, she had even finished, a volunteer who wasn't scheduled to come to the community center turned up and had a key to let us in. As it happens, the, the actual caretaker didn't arrive, arrive two and a half hours late. Well, we finally get in there, we start to get settle, ourselves settled, and then the next bombshell hits. Well, um, we were told that despite advertising this for months and months in advance, that um, they had us booked for the Sunday rather than the Saturday, which is why there was no caretaker. And because they didn't think we were going to be there, they had booked another party right in the middle of our event from 12 to 2. <laughs> you can't, I mean, you can't make this stuff up, can you? So then we were presented with a new problem. What are we going to do between 12 and 2 to, you know, to get out of these people's way? um and be able to finish you know our day so we started scouting around there was a pub just across the road they hemmed and hawed and had every excuse why they couldn't do it so it was like you know what fine you keep that went to walking around in the area which admittedly didn't have, near the rather high tunnel didn't have a lot of amenities in the immediate area but we decided to take a look at one of the um, assistants to the organizer night um, to find if what possibilities there were. There was another pub, but that one was boarded up and derelict, so that was uh, definitely out, and there was nothing else. But in between these two pubs, one functional and one not, there was a lovely, lovely little place, and it was um, a Norwegian church. We, as And as it happened, my companion said, ah, you know what, let's give it a try. You don't ask, you don't get. Absolutely right. And because we asked, we got. So the goddess hand led us to, <laughs> to this little church, lovely place. And the secretary of the church said, you know what, you are so lucky. Yeah, right. We knew what that was about. <laughs> if you had come the week before or the week after, you would have had no luck because the place would have been filled with children for the Norwegian school. Right. And in fact, while we were there talking to the church secretary, there was an, an actual meeting going on. And she said, well, you're, you're even in further luck because this lot will be out 
at 12 o'clock and there's nothing planned the rest of the day. So you can come and you can bring your thing. So you don't have to, do, we won't disturb you. We have our own food. We have, you know, everything. She says, oh, we can offer you coffee and tea. That's no problem. Um, and you can even warm up your food as, as long as you don't get in the cook's way because she has to prepare for it for the next day, for Sunday. Right. So here we go. But the, the women, uh, myself included, and a couple of men who were also who are helping the goddess, transporting across the road, you have baskets, bags and bags of food and drink and all kinds of stuff to this beautiful little church. Now, so here we go, 12 to two, we're, we're sitting in there, we're having quietly um, getting ourselves ready, having a lovely lunch, people loving the venue and say, boy, we should have come here instead. Um, and maybe next year we will. <laughs> But in the, but in all of that, there was very few ructions, very few people upset. Two or three people left because they didn't want to um, put up with the hoo ha that was going on. But it was it's unfortunate because there really was an unseen hand that made sure that everything, despite all of the hiccups, despite all of the aggravations, despite trotting back and forth. <laughs> with all kinds of stuff um, between venues and taking down and setting up th three, t three times <laughs> during the event. Um, it was a wonderful event. The people that needed to be there were there. Um, and it was beautiful to see. I mean, um, I didn't get to see many of the workshops because I was busy or even leave my own on time. I, um, but I took a canceled slot. Somebody backed out at the last minute and I took her slot. So everything just fit together like a beautiful mosaic with not, and it's almost seamlessly till people didn't even realize um, that, that there were all of these shenanigans going on in the background. And so what it taught all of us um, as we reflected on the, the end of the day that that in morning invocation to shift that energy and stop griping and bitching and change the energy actually did change things and made the whole day um, despite the weather despite the the setbacks despite the, all of the running around made the event a real pleasure um, to have participated in. Um, I made some new contacts, some new friends, I get some ideas about um, doing something very interesting, a combination of yoga and burlesque. It was a, it was a scream. I had a great time. But in all of that, what was, what was obvious is that the power and energy of the goddess was true, well and truly present, um, helping us to function together and work together um, and to keep our sense of humor uh, and our sense of the purpose of the day, which was to celebrate um, the feminine, the divine feminine. And I think it was very much at work today, um, that day, and it even has carried on, I think, for, for at least for me, from that day. Um, as a, earlier this afternoon, uh, I was in uh, participating in an interview with someone that I consider a mentor and a, a true goddess in her own right um, in terms of guiding me um, along my path as, as a business wo woman, uh, Julie Xil Kalunji. Kudos to you, Julie. You are the business. Um, so, you know, that energy is carrying over and it's getting stronger. And I think in a sense, it has to be the world is energetically is just truly, truly unbalanced. Um, there's way too much, um, yang energy, too much active energy. Sometimes what needs to happen is to, to accept the situation and to release it for things to shift. And that's what awakening the goddess was all about so i leave that thought with you and um challenge you whether you're a woman or a man to think about 
how the goddess is, is unseen hand may be working in your own life. Because the men that were working um, with alongside us at the festival, you know, get, doing the heavy lifting, if you will, were also in service of the goddess. So I put that to you. Think about that. And ladies, yes, get your goddess groove on and see how things will change. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Have an absolutely wonderful evening and a great weekend. And I'll see you again soon. There are some marvelous things coming up in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned. I'll be telling you all about it before too long. Take care. Bye-bye.